Good morning everyone, Scott from Scott's Moto Adventures on another long, kind of long distance day trip and this is going to be more of a racetrack based uh, trip. I am ending up, go I'm, I'm going to end up going to a couple of places here, um, hit up a couple racetracks. I'm actually on my way to Island Dragway in... Uh, I think it's the next town over from Voorhees, New Jersey. Today's going to be a, about a 500 mile day today. I have a couple of places I'm going to be hitting up. Um, some, some tracks I've been to. Uh, we will get to ride a classic Grand Prix track from the late 40s, early 50s, and and uh, I get to hit Route 6, which is one of my favorite roads in, in the whole world, let alone Pennsylvania. So uh, we're going to be going east, north, south, and then that's it. So it's a nice 500-mile ride. I will finish up the Gran Turismo, get my finishing status. So I get like a plaque or a pin or something. I, I don't know. Um, I drug my feet on that challenge. I'm not... I have the Cotty Wample flag with me, but I'm not going to go nuts about that. Dude, come on. I can't see. Ugh, I keep doing this. All right, everyone. Here I am at Island Dragway. So we got a an old 50s truck towing a funny car. Nice Mercury Comet. I'm going off-roading now. Yeah, we got a Cyclone, you got a 57 Chevy. Thank you. Yeah, an old timer who has no clue where he is. It's a scary thing he gets to go down a drag strip. Well, yeah. Top Fuel, Plymouth, I don't know. Fancy, fancy. I was told there was gonna be a line here. And, he, and my coworker was right. Alright, I am on 209 North because I missed an exit, and actually I'm kind of glad I missed, missed an exit. Uh, next stop is SNS Speedway. Like I said, it's a nice little, oval. if you're looking for oval style go-kart tracks, this is, it's, um, the stuff is a little beat up, uh, but it's a lot of fun. After SNS, my next stop was Pocono Raceway, the Tricky Triangle. Built in early 1970s, Pocono hosted USAC, CART, IndyCar, and NASCAR events on the big 2.5 mile triangle. There was a three quarter mile short track built into the infield and front stretch, but it was removed during one of the many reno renovations. Pocono was also the host of the Race of Champions modified races. Now Pocono hosts SCCA events, motorcycle classes, and other events like color runs. I've been there a few times, once for a rained out IndyCar race and another for an Xfinity race. This is one track I've been looking forward to with the uh, Team Strange Gran Turismo. Alright, for my Harley brethren as I'm on I-80 here. To your left is Pocono Harley Davidson. Uh, technically that franchise has been around forever. Uh, it came around, uh, I know the Shocks owned it for a very, very long time. It used to be off of, uh, Route 33. Then it got moved, uh, once, um, Mr. Schleer bought it. And I know Mr. Schleer from the towing side of life. And, uh, Christ. And... He 
had it for a couple years. He built that. He tore down his diner. He built that giant uh, dealership. And then he sold in the last two to three years, I want to say. Uh, he's living the good retired life. He sold it. It was weird. He sold his uh, towing company and his uh, motorcycle shop all at the same time. At first, so I was a little worried about him, but he's doing fine uh, in Florida. So, but yeah, that is uh, that is Pocono Harley Davidson for those for my Harley brethren who watch who watch uh, my channel, all five of you. And on top of that, I don't think they sell poker chips. I was looking for poker chips there. I couldn't find any, but any there. But that doesn't mean that they're not there. So I just have to look harder, I guess. I think I'm, I think I'm making my way to the track. Well, I know I'm making my way to the track. Hey, there it is. So this is uh, this is one of your main roads into. Uh, nope, I should have been in, a, in another lane. Oh well, uh, but this is the. This is what that that was the main road into the track. If you notice, it's three lanes. If you notice, I'm in two lanes here. You see an issue with uh, what's going on here? Oops, sorry, lady. So, and actually there's a little track here. I wonder if I can get this one too. I might get this one. I might get two. Here, I'm gonna quick. I'm gonna get two. There's like a little dirt oval. It's so it's supposed to be cute and here let me go turn around. All right, so that was Pocono everybody and I got a front camera working. Yay. So yeah, Pocono great track. Uh, actually my next stop is not a racetrack. It's actually a Nittany Lion. Uh, we're gonna head up to Penn State Scranton. Um, one thing I'm disappointed in myself is I did not get to every Penn State campus. But you know what? I'm not a Penn State fan. Sorry to say that. Um, I'm not a college football fan. Uh, I'm not a college sports fan. I don't know. Like I went to college for other reasons. So I got out on around 6, 6.30. My guy, I didn't record, start recording correctly. Look at all the goats. I think they're goats. Ooh, okay. Sun glare plus rough road does not help. Oh, look at that, a micro bus, uh, mini bus, or a uh, Westophilia bus. Again, my friend Chris is going to yell at me for not knowing exactly what it is. All right. Here, let me do a quick. All right. So, there, I got that for sinking. Ah, of course, I'm going to get cold here. So, everyone, uh, I just took my first break of the day. Um, I wanted to get a coffee, and that was a Cheats, and coffee was needed. I actually had to get cast before. I got so scared, I was, and I didn't know there was a Cheats up here. All right, let's see if... This is great YouTube stuff right here, fixing my freaking glove. All right, that is tight around my wrist. So I ended up getting some gas and I'm not going to be recording too much at this point. After Penn State Scranton I found myself trying to go to two tracks but I ended up only going to one. 
I ended up in Penn Can Speedway in Susquehanna, Pennsylvania, a dirt oval track. I had also planned to go to Hamlin Speedway in Moscow, PA, but a GPS had changed my plans. Everyone made it to my next stop. I'm actually on the phone right now because my camera has now crapped out. Uh, I ran out of I ran out of power. I don't care carry spare batteries. So yep, I'm at Chemung. Uh, Champion was a bust. I had to go down the road. I didn't feel comfortable. So uh, yeah, that's what's going on. But yeah, I made it to Chemung, and next up is uh, Watkins Glen. After Chemung, I headed up to Watkins Glen International. This was the final replacement for the original street course. Watkins Glen International started as a permanent course in 1956, and in a way was a 2.3 mile facsimile to the original 6.6 .6 mile street course. Like the original street course, Watkins Glen International had a small front stretch, S's after a 90 degree turn that led up into a very high speed straightaway, a very tight turn, and then turn six was also known as the Big Bend, just like the original street course had a Big Bend. The track in Watkins Glen is an actual 6.6 .6 mile street course. The start finish line is located at the local courthouse and from there the track winds its way through the country. I will, I will be recording most of the track with the exception of most of the front stretch because of the massive amount of traffic. So here we start, we're going to go up Old Corning Hill in the Seneca Lake area, Corning Glass is a staple. I highly suggest going to the Corning Glass Museum, where not only do you see things like glassware, but you see art and in, in industrial uses for glass. After the hill you go by Seneca Lodge. It started around the same time as the Grand Prix. The current lodge was rebuilt in 1948. It was founded by Donald Brubaker who also helped get the Grand Prix started. He was the president of the Chamber of Commerce in Watkins Glen at the time. Also, the 1948 Grand Prix banquet was hosted at the lodge and you can find many more memorabilia and racing items inside the lodge itself. Now, the Grand Prix of Watkins Glen was billed as the first post-World War II road race. Cameron Argensinger pushed for the race in the Finger Lakes of New York, and Watkins Glen took up the challenge. The race itself ran from 1948 to 1952. Because of a spectator death, 1952 was the last year of the original Grand Prix street course.
After the long high speed stretch, as you can see there is a railroad bridge, we come to Schoolhouse Corner. This is where the elevation dips down and is a much more technical part of the track. It is also where Cornette Stone Bridge is. Cornette Stone Bridge is not named after a dignitary or an important local. No, it's to a driver of an MG race car. Denver Cornette in 1948 had an issue during qualifying on that bridge and fell into the dry creek bed. He survived, got the car back together, and with the help of his competitors, finished seventh the day of the race. After I got out of the hollow, I ended up on the railroad straight. What you see here today is all paved, but at the time of racing, it was dirt. Imagine running a race in bias supply tires, no roll cage on a dirt road. I don't think the modern race car driver could be able to comprehend that. Next up is the Big Bend. They say it was a steep downgrade, but it felt more like a long, long, long wide turn to me. It has an excellent view coming down into town and you get a great look at Seneca Lake. Final turn before I move on with this video is Milliken Corner. No, not named after a milkman. Milliken was a racer in the 1948 race. And like Denver Cornette, after a scary accident where Milliken flipped his Bugatti, the locals had decided to name that corner after him. So that is a lap around the original road course. I hope you enjoyed it. I have to say, please visit the Lake Seneca area. You have a lot of wineries, a few microbreweries, and some distilleries. You can 
fish. You can go to races that aren't at Watkins Glen International. You should also check out the waterfalls and the glen itself in town. Um, hey everyone, I'm not, I'm not quite on Route 6 yet. Uh, I needed a quick rest. I am on, I think, 202, no, 220 South, and that's going to turn into Route 6 in about a couple miles. Um, had some grandma, I got stuck behind a grandma at some point. It's been a pretty good ride so far. Uh, it was interesting, I, I turned right, I got off the highway, um, 80, I think it's 86, I-86 in Chemung, I'm like, oh man, you know, it's gonna be a while before I get to the PA border. Next thing you know, I'm in the PA border, or I'm there, I mean, it's to the right. Which is weird because I've seen a couple people say this is upstate New York, and I'm like, hey, you guys are really close to the border. I don't get the upstate thing. So, uh, did actually, I actually did some cottywampling, picked up two bells, and, um, to something that really like right now I think I'm at 5,000 points I got the Penn State statue I think I picked up three bells today I'd like to get up to six because six would be how many miles I put on the bike this year or maybe more I mean I love seven but that's a lot of work and I'm kind of tired but it's been a good ride so far don't think I'm going to hit 114,000 miles today, but that's something I could do this week if I ride the bike to work. Uh, work's been crazy, adding new people, just trying to keep the place running. It's getting tough, uh, it's just tough right now, so. But doing this is what I love to, you know, I'm in, really enjoying this, just hitting my, uh, doing the back roads. to be a jerk so I just revved it three times all right 39 miles of route 6 that is what they have told me so that is great and then I get on 29 south which actually I think it's up by my house anyway but I'm gonna be on the highway at some point so yes yeah, that's great I'll get out of dandy area uh, I've noticed a lot of dandies up here must be a North PA, South New York thing. And never ate in there, never got gas there. So maybe sometime, at some point, I'll try out their food. The guy on the bike scared me a little, so. Headed down south by the Susquehanna. I don't know if I'm gonna end up in Harrisburg by the, uh, by the Statue of Liberty. Yes, we have a Statue of Liberty in here, or near Harrisburg, on the river there. that diesel bro was going to be faster oh that reminds me I know where there's a couple of bells that I did not get I just thought of that because it was like it was a good one I'll go for a ride Thanks for joining me today, everyone. I had a productive, long 500-mile day. I picked up eight racetracks, a couple of bells, and a cat statue. I ended up riding my motorcycle on a historic racetrack, and I ended my day on one of my favorite roads. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, please hit the like and subscribe button, and leave a comment. Catch you guys later.